Dear NASA. Oh, girl. This resume will never get you in, but let's make a few changes that will. Liz, how are you? <laughs> Hello, Joe. I'm well. How are you? I'm doing great. Look, you you ever watch a movie that just hits you at the exact right time? That was me watching Space Cadet last night. Like, I was <laughs> laughing right off, but I resonated so deep with some of the themes in this movie. I feel like this is a great balance between comedy and some truly heartwarming moments. But the question I have for you is, where did the idea for this story come from? Well, thank you so much for saying that. And I was definitely trying to make a movie that would resonate with people, even if it was not about a space career, because that's very niche. <laughs> for me, the motivation came from reading a few years ago that NASA had its first class of astronaut candidates where it was 50-50 male-female. So I started to read about like, who do you have to be to even get to that point? Because tens of thousands of people apply and then like anywhere from a dozen to six are selected to even try to be an astronaut. And so I just started reading about these incredibly competitive, driven, focused, accomplished people, which was is admirable and exciting and feels like you can build a comedy out of a world of those kind of people. But also it made me think about, you know, what if you're not that person? Like, what if you don't know from the time that you're in high school that you want to go to the college where you're going to get the STEM degree and then you're going to get the higher degree? And that feels like more realistic. That feels like more of us. Sure. Right. Or like that, where it takes a lot to have the audacity to think I could be an astronaut. And you have to have a lot of support around you, I think, to entertain any of those crazy dreams. And I mean, it, it just makes me think of what I do too, right? Is that you have to be lucky enough to have people around you going like, no, you could maybe pull that off. It's not so crazy to think that you might go to Hollywood, blah, blah, blah. But most people don't have that. So I liked this heroine who maybe had had that early on, but now in her life, everyone's like, no, no, no. But she's listening to this voice inside and she's right. Right. Absolutely. Now, I love that this film really shines a light on uh, not giving up on your dream, empowerment and second chances. But another theme in this film is the value of teamwork, because everything astronauts do is kind of in support of their mission. Um, now, you being the writer and director of this film, uh, can you talk about the teamwork uh, that you had with uh, Emma Roberts, who was an executive producer on this film, to bring Space Cadet to life and Rex to life? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you get to work with someone who is as experienced and funny and smart and savvy as Emma, you are so lucky. Like people think, I think that directors, uh, you know, they think of them in isolation, but the reality is you're only as good as the people that you're surrounded by. And I was surrounded by incredibly talented, inspired people, starting with Emma, who's just a very naturally funny, witty person who understood the movie that I wanted to make, wanted to make the same movie. And then, you know, we could push each other. Like she could be like, just couldn't it look more like this? I could be like, couldn't you be weirder like this? And then like, we just wound up on the same page. It was so awesome. That's incredible. Now, I think Emma is fantastic in this and her superpower is really seeing the potential in people and seeing the best version of themselves. Can you tell us about the character of Rex? Yeah, so Rex is someone who grew up in Florida, watching the shuttle launches, being hugely inspired by it, being told by her mother, that's a dream that you could achieve. But then when she loses her mother, um, when her mother passes away, her life takes this turn. And then 10 years have gone by and she hasn't lived up to her potential. And she has this flash of thinking, maybe I could, maybe I could do this. Maybe I could return to this dream. And, but she's got no qualifications. So the challenge for me then was to think about, okay, well then she's gonna get to this training program and she didn't go to college, let alone get a master's degree, let alone have a career in STEM. So what does she realistically bring to the table? And she's someone who is 
an engineer, a DIY imagineer. That might be a Disney property, but no. <laughs> but she's she's making stuff all the time in her life. Like she knows how to envision, you know, a better mousetrap. And she also, as you said, critically believes in other people. And that's a huge part of how these astronauts get selected actually, is that they have to be people who can work with other people, support them, bring out their strengths. And though that might look like you're not a competitive, serious person, if you're like hyping everybody up all the time, that's actually one of her superpowers and it's what gets her so far and gets the respect of her peers. Absolutely. Well, Liz, thank you so much for your time. The film is fantastic. It's so much fun, but with such a great message. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Oh, Joe, thank you. I'm so glad. Take care, Liz. Have a great day. You too. We have a special name for astronaut candidates, Ascans. <laughs> what? <laughs>